11, 12 years. So it's worked out pretty good for LeBron James. Not saying that this is going to work out. Not saying that these kids can even play at the next level. But we don't know. You know, we don't know. We do know this. That's their family. They are family. Their father, their sons, their sons, their fathers. I mean, what? You can't get nobody in business like that and tell them what's right or wrong concerning them. Uh, so, so at the end of the day, man, ball award from me, the Doug Stewart Show. Ball award to LeVar Ball. Ball award to LeVar Ball. What are your thoughts on this story, man? 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com. Let me read some of your messages in the chat room on Spreaker.com. Ah. So my man ducking and dodging in the chat room on Spreaker.com. Duckin' and Dodger says his top five chips. Number five, Lay's Kettle Cooked Jalapeno Flavored Chips. Those are good as, as hell, too, man. Let me write those down for an honorable mention. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? They would never make my top five list, man, because I'm old school chip, big ass, you know, potato shavings. And those little crunchy ass chips, they're too damn hard. The kettle cooked, but they are good. So the kettle cooked jalapeno, yeah, that's the flavor that I get whenever I go to uh, to Subway. The, the the kettle cooked jalapeno flavored chips, they they sell them at Subway. So I'm gonna put that on my honorable mention. So that's who he has at number five and number four in his top five favorite chips of all times. Uh, chili cheese Fritos. Chili cheese Fritos is real, real flavorful. Yeah. <laughs> they might make my list here. Just stay tuned. Coming in at number three is Flamin' Hot Cheetos. I like the Flamin' Hot Cheetos, too. They all right. My daughter's addicted to those, I think. And I already told her, man, we got high blood pressure in this family. You got to stop eating all them damn Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Ah, ducking and dodging agrees with me. Putting Cool Ranch Doritos high on his list at number two and number one. God damn. I'm going to have to reorder my damn top five. I forgot all about the great Funyuns. He's got Funyuns at number one. Uh, I forgot about Funyuns. But the problem with Funyuns, though, man, is they're not really satisfying. You know what I'm saying? they like, you know, air. If you don't know what Funyuns are, Funyuns are basically uh, like potato chip snack type onion rings. And they're light and they're crispy and they're delicious, but they're not really satisfying, man. Your ass still hungry as hell after you eat some Funyuns. So they honorable mention. They honorable mention. Sydney J. Y. D. Jackson says their daddy shouldn't be quiet. Nobody told Archie Manning to be quiet when he was manipulating where Eli was going to sign. Very good point. Very good analogy. And this isn't nothing new. Now, is it as out there? Is it as loud and as boisterous as, uh, as, as LeVar Ball? Maybe not, but it is what it is. This man got confidence in his boys, okay? And if you've seen Lonzo Ball play at UCLA, he can play. He can play. They're already talking about him once again in the top two, three picks in the draft this year. Looks like a consummate point guard, floor general. Had a tough game in his last game in the, uh, in the Big Ten tournament. Uh, but they expect big things out of, out of him in the NCAA tournament, man. The kid can play. And once again, I, I, I really like one of the comments I heard the Daddy Ball say a couple of days ago. When uh, Where was he at? Mm. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. I think that he was on the Colin Cowherd Show. So somebody had posted a clip on social media. Um, and I think Colin Cowherd, it was Colin Cowherd. He was interviewing the dad. And that's what I'm talking about. This guy's basically a father. This guy is, he's not a player. He's not a, a, an agent. He's not an attorney or anything like that. He's not a business manager or anything like that. But a regular everyday dude is getting interviewed on a nationally syndicated TV show, Colin Cowherd. And one thing that he said, man, that was, that was, it was very big to me, and it stuck to me when he said it. He knows how hard his sons worked. 
He said, I know how hard my sons have worked, so I have a reason to be confident. And a lot of people, you don't, you don't figure it out till after the fact, man, until it's too late, or at least in my case, it was the, uh, in my situation, that was the case, man. Y- you really don't understand until you've been around athletes that make it to the NFL, um, what it takes to make it to that level. I mean, it, it's, it's not just, you know, you going out there for the regular practices and having a good game in high school or whatever, and you don't do extra things. I'm talking about extra things. I'm talking about the things that you do when everybody else is asleep. When you're up in the morning at 5 o'clock and you're working out and you're running and you're in the weight room and you're eating right and you're, you're studying game film. I mean, that's, that's the type of thing that he's talking about. He knows how hard these kids have worked. And he feels very confident that they're going to be great players at the next level. Uh, you can't say nothing about that but respect. Give it respect. No problem with that. From Thorny Sun Switch. Good morning, Thorny Sun Switch. She says, I bet if Bobby Knight had some talented kids and was talking like this, the mainstream media would validate all this commentary. Agreed. Agreed. Um, and, and it's funny how the narrative of this, this LeVar Ball guy now is that he's some type of maniac. This guy got plenty of sense. He's got much sense, okay? Um, they live in California. First of all, they live in California. Uh, they showed a clip of uh, the balls in their backyard playing, uh, like, pickup basketball. And the fact that you got a, a, a house in California, a nice basketball court in the backyard, says that you're making a lot of money. <laughs> Right. You know that real estate in California is like four times what it is here in, in, in Atlanta. If you're new to the show, the, ba- the show is based here in Metro Atlanta. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he evidently is gainfully employed. Those kids don't want for anything. You know, they get their education. I mean, you can't be mad at them. From Big John B, guarantee nobody wants to play with any of them ball boys. Why, though? And you, you know what, Big John B? It seems like that's kind of like the sentiment. It's kind of like they're trying to take what the daddy says. You can't go back and give me one comment from these ball, ball boys, uh, and in particular Lonzo Ball, that's been, you know, over the top sounding very conceited like. I haven't heard one clip from Lonzo Ball where he sounds reminiscent of his daddy. That's his daddy talking. That's his daddy talking. I hope that no one holds this against them boys. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. From uh, that ninja, nothing is wrong with what the father's doing. That baseball player kids uh, took his son out of high school and never got criticized like this. They just want ninjas to be quiet. I, I hear you. I mean, uh, I hear you. From um, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. Mo cheeks for three. Oh, he gives us top five potato chips of all times. Coming in at number five, mesquite ruffles no longer available. <laughs> How do you know they're no longer available, bro? You're an addict. Coming in at number four, Lay's Salt and Vinegar. Oh, that's a good one right there. I think somebody mentioned that earlier. Coming in at number three on Mo Cheeks for three on his top five favorite potato chips type snacks of all times. Coming in at number three, Golden Flakes Sweet Heat. I'm not a fan of the Sweet Heat. No matter what brand. For some reason, my palate doesn't accept the sweet heat. Coming in at number two, sour cream and cheddar. Oh, Lay sour cream and cheddar. I was about to ask what brand. Lay sour cream and cheddar. Here's something else about me and my potato chip likes and, and dislikes. I don't like no cheese flavored potato chips. And I don't know why that is, but I do not like any cheese-flavored potato chips. I guess in my mind, if I'm going to get something cheese-flavored, I'll just get some damn cheeses. No, nah, I don't eat that. And coming in at number one for Mole Cheeks, Ray's Red Hot. I'm, lying, I'm trying to look at this picture. He actually changed his profile pic. See, I don't think that I've ever had, if this is Ray's that you have in your profile pic, I don't think I've ever had Ray's Red Hot. Now, a lot of times, some of these potato chips are kind of regionalized. 
So, like, down in the south, the big brand of potato chip outside of the big boy and Ruffles or whatever or Doritos or something like that. Down here in the south, there's a brand called Golden Flake, which is the bomb diggity. I know it up north, I heard my man Rel Scott talk about this before on the show, that uh, on the show that uh, Utz, uh, U-T-Z, is a big brand in, like, the Philadelphia, New York area. Um, so, I don't know. I've never had Ray's Red Hot before. I don't think I've ever even seen it before. And a lot of times, if there's a new potato chip out right now, I'm probably not going to taste it because I'm good with the flavors that I like already. Yeah. I'm country like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm country like that. Let me look at another message in the chat room on Spreaker.com. From Mo Cheeks from 3 again. He says, LeVar putting that work in for his boys and his family. Don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, it was quite refreshing. So this morning I'm watching uh, Mike and Mike and, and uh, what was his name? Jason Williams. Jason Williams was on there. And they were talking about this story and the host, uh, Mike Greenberg, or not Mike Greenberg, Mike Golick and the other guy, I can't remember his name right now, that's filling in for Greenberg. They basically set it up where they wanted Jason Williams to throw the daddy ball under the, the, the bus. And Jason Williams, you know, he's the consummate professional, went to Duke, smart, and all of that shit, I guess. Jason Williams was like, I had to sneeze just now. So Jason Williams was like, man, listen, guys, I got to keep it real, man. I hear what you're saying. I hear what the press and the media are saying about uh, Mr. LeVar Ball. But I got to be honest with you. When I came out of the NBA, I realized that my parents took care of me and put me in a position where I could play basketball at a high level. I could go to Duke. I could get a good education. I could get drafted in the first round by the Chicago Bulls. And so my whole thing was I wanted to take care of my family. And a lot of people from the outside didn't understand that, and I kind of got called out about it. But I wanted to take care of my family, the people that supported me throughout my journey to get to that point. So I don't have a problem with all and what LeVar Ball is doing. Uh, in effect, that's exactly what he said, you know. I thought that was great. And he went on to say how, you know, he had made all of this money. And I think Jason Williams, I think he might have been like the first or second pick in the draft. Maybe the first pick in the draft. He says his whole thing was he wanted to set up businesses, you know, for his family. He wanted to create and continue to generate wealth with the money that he made from the NBA. And I thought that was great, man. Real, real good stuff. And that's the same way I look at the situation with LeVar Ball and his boys. And really, for that matter, any kid coming out of college that makes a lot of money, man. Nothing wrong with taking care of the people that supported you. Back in three minutes, the Doug Stewart Show. Forever. Yeah. Yeah. BMX forever. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cool be forever. X back forever. Emotions try to track my eyes. I get cheery. I reach out to my people. It seems they don't hear me.